Michael Shamblin here and welcome to another landscape photography processing video. And this time I'm sharing my absolute favorite masking techniques in Lightroom, including a tool that I recently found, which is so good, it's actually a little bit unfair. So let's just go ahead and dive into this right now. So I've got Lightroom Classic open here and I've got a few images from the Southwest that I'm working on for a new vlog. Let's just start out with some very basic techniques and we're gonna work our way up towards my favorite one. So first thing, if you wanna add a vignette, rather than use the vignette tool, which I find super limited, you can use a radial gradient. So click on the masking tool right up here, radial gradient. I recommend just starting from the center, dragging it outward. I usually drag it a little further than the canvas. And then we're gonna take the exposure down, click invert so that we're affecting what's on the outside of the circle, not what's on the inside. And there we go. Very simple way of making a vignette. And you also have all these other controls. So if you wanna control how much of the shadows and the blacks are affected, you can actually pull those up. Just a great way of doing this. Next, we've got our linear gradient. I'm gonna pull that down from the sky just to do a really soft darkness in the sky. And now we can see a little bit more of the texture from the clouds here. And now let's try something a little bit different. Let's go with the select sky button, which maybe you've tried this before, maybe you haven't. I have a few really specific ways that I like to use the select sky button. Right here, you can see it makes this perfect selection of the sky, but if I darken this, you'll notice it always looks a little funky on the horizon. It's almost too stark. So what I do to soften that is I actually take the minus icon here, which means we're gonna subtract from the mask, go into the linear gradient. And I like to pull that in from the ground. And if we look at that, it just helps to soften that area around the horizon. Now the other ways you can use the sky selection tool is let's make another one here. And if we right click on that, invert that mask, now we don't have a sky selection, but we have a ground selection. So now you can do any edit to the ground and it will be isolated away from the sky. One more super quick handy way of using this tool is select sky. And let's say we wanna add just a little bit of haze on the horizon. Let's go to our dehaze right here. Take that down. You can see it sort of softens the area on the horizon. And then we want to isolate that to just the horizon itself. We can take the minus icon again, lean your gradient, and pull that in from the sky. Now we have this really nice targeted adjustment for just the horizon that also isn't affecting the ground. All right, so now let's switch to an image I've been really excited to work on. This one's from Gooseneck State Park. I'm gonna go into our masking and let's try the color range mask. And what I love about this tool is it's so simple. You basically just take the eyedropper, click on the color you wanna isolate. So in this case, we can take the blues, and we can darken those. And then you have your refine tool up here to refine that adjustment. So you can kind of make it a little less or a little greater depending on what type of effect you're trying to achieve here. Let's take another one of the color range and let's select the clouds this time. So we can then adjust the clouds, maybe adjust the white balance so we get a little bit of those warm tones in the clouds while still retaining the blues in the sky. And one thing to remember with any of these masks, whether it's the color range or it's the radial filter or any of these, you can always refine your mask by clicking the add or subtract icon. So I'm always doing that to isolate certain areas. In this case, I only want the adjustment to be in the sky. So I'm going to take the minus icon, lean your gradient, and I'm just going to go right along the horizon so that our color range is only affecting those clouds and not the rest of the ground. Okay, so in the beginning of the video, I talked about a tool that absolutely blew me away. Let's go ahead and dive into that one. So this is the object selection tool. So I'm gonna click on this. Let's say I wanted to select these rivers and make them a little bit brighter. Well, check this out. I'm just gonna crudely draw along the river and it does a perfect job <laughs> selecting that river. Now, let's say we wanna add the other river. I'm gonna click on the plus icon, go back to objects crudely select the river. 
not even trying that hard. So then I can go ahead and brighten that up, add some contrast, make it a little bit more apparent. Once I did this, I realized it did a really good job, but this is also a fairly easy thing to select. What if I gave it more challenging things to try and select? So let's take that object tool again, and let's just see if it does a good job with this foreground here. So I'm gonna select that. It does a perfect job, then I can kind of darken that, make it a little less distracting, take down the whites. And even with a section like right here where you have those minor color shifts, you can, again, take the object selection, boom. Here's one downside to this tool. The selection you make, you really only have the ability to control the amount right here. You can't really soften this tool with the tool itself. So let's say we wanna soften this, subtract some of it. We need to take the brush tool, Let's do a density of about 50 here, and then just kind of brush along the edge of that selection, and it just helps to soften that area. So one con to this adjustment. So let me show you something really cool that Lightroom added into masking, and I'll show it to you in a practical way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a radial gradient here. Let's go right about there invert that. I'm going to make a, another vignette for this photograph and check this out. So you actually have a curves adjustment now in your masks. So I can adjust this curve and I can kind of alter the shadows so they're a little softer. And this is just fantastic. I love using curves for things so I'm really happy they added this in. The only thing that would make it better is if Lightroom added HSL sliders to their masks. So we'll see when that happens, but until then, curves is a good adjustment to have. Now let's say we liked what this vignette did, but we don't want it to affect those rivers. Well, again, we're gonna go ahead and go to the minus icon, objects, and we can just select those rivers so that they are not part of our vignette. So again, this is all about making a selection and adding or removing certain elements depending on what you wanna show the viewer, what you're trying to isolate, or what you're trying to hide. So I was curious just how powerful this object selection tool was because you know I've given it some easy things to select and some moderately harder things to select, but then I have this image right here. And I thought, okay, let me see if I can select these rivers because check out how complicated these are compared to the other photograph. We've got this really bright section with a shadow. We've got some mixed lighting, spotlighting, and then this one right here, which is a fairly complicated shape. Some of these colors are very similar as well. So let's go ahead, go into masking, select on objects. Let's try this one first. Okay, so it did a good job selecting it, and it even selected the shadow. Now, if we don't want it to select the shadow, we can just go into the minus icon, go into objects, and just scrub along that shadow, and it removes it. We can go ahead and brighten that up, add some contrast. Let's select the other rivers now, plus icon, objects. Perfect job. Again, <laughs> and then the last one. Yep, pretty good job. So yeah, just a really impressive addition to Lightroom here. And you know, I found myself using Photoshop less and less over the years. It was when I started, I was probably 80% Photoshop 20% Lightroom, and now that's really reversed, and uh, we'll just have to see what happens in the future with it all. But yeah, if you want to learn more about how I process my images, I've got some bigger tutorials, links in the description to check those out. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.